Hi, welcome. Today we're going to be painting this painting right here. It's new, it is summer, and it is something I was really, really excited to do. I'm going to try to show you its side right now. It's probably entirely white because the camera is overexposed, but summer is ending where I am, and it is turning into fall, and I just, I feel like I have so many summer ideas that I still want to get out there, and this one was one of my favorites. I was considering adding light rays into it like I did with these two, but I just, it needed to be more simple. It needed to be more relaxed. However, if you would like to add light rays into it, like in one of these paintings, you're more than welcome to. It was an idea I had that I thought I would just pass on to you before we got started. Anyways, as per usual, you can find the digital sketch of this up on Patreon for those of you who would like a little help with the drawing process, and you can find the full hour-long lesson up on Patreon. And you can find the... <laughs> I can't speak. And you can find the full hour-long lesson of this up on Patreon along with all of these and about 30 others. If you're interested, go check it out, link in the description. Let's jump into today's video while I can still talk. We're going to begin here today with our larger square-headed brush, and I'm going to dip just the tip of it in some water to ensure that it's nice and damp. This is going to help me spread my acrylic paints a little bit farther and extend their wet life. Then I'm going to grab some pure titanium white paint and apply this up here in the sky where I want all of my light to be coming from. I'm going to take a little bit more of that, I'm going to put it down in the reflection of that light as well. Then I'm going to go back to my palette, grab some primary yellow, and a good amount of titanium white. I want much more titanium white than primary yellow because I want this application to feel warm, but not to feel too saturated. So that's why I applied the initial layer of titanium white. It's going to essentially desaturate anything we put on the canvas going forward. And it's just going to help ensure that our application isn't too yellow or too dark. Now I'm going to take that same application. I'm going to apply it down and into our reflection. I'm going to go back to my palette. We're going to mix up a really nice yellowy green for the trees. I'm going to take some primary yellow, hint of primary blue, then I'm going to take some titanium white, brighten that up, as you can see. And I think that'll be a really nice bright green for our sky. So I'm going to switch now over to an older square-headed brush. This is one where the bristles kind of leaf off into varying directions, so when I make a tapping motion with it, I get all these different implications and dots on the canvas. It's great for foliage in the distance, stars, anything that's very small, and you need to make hundreds of it quickly. Then I'm going to pick that paint up off my palette, and I'm going to start tapping it onto my canvas along the edges of my trees. Then I'm going to take that brush, I'm going to take a little bit more primary blue, tiny bit, just a tiny bit of Mars Black, mix that in there, and create a slightly darker green. I'm going to do it on top of my first mixture, but I'm going to leave a little bit of it to the side just so I can see the contrast. Then I'm going to take this pigment and I'm going to tap that on to the canvas right behind what we were just working on. Then I'm going to take some primary yellow, put it right underneath here. Generally this would have dried by now, so I'm going to try not to use it. I'm just going to take some titanium white, mix it up till we get something nice and close. And I'm going to take this new color, I'm going to tap this along the edges of the bushes and trees that are closest to the light. And I'm going to move it backwards a little bit, I'm going to move it down a little bit, but the goal here is to make it look like there are clumps and clusters that are all different and reacting in their own way to the light. I'm moving to the left as I lose paint on my brush, it kind of trails off and gets more of that natural coloring showing through instead. Now I'm going to return with my medium sized square headed brush, dip the tip of it in the water, again to extend the wet life of our paint and drag it out a little bit farther. Then I'm going to go to my palette, grab some primary yellow, mix in a little bit of our primary blue, 
hint of our Mars black, and create a nice green that's fairly similar to what we used up there. Because we're now going to begin working on the reflection of our water. And I'm going to do this with the medium sized square headed brush because it is fairly large, it can carry a lot of paint, and because it has these nice sharp edges that can kind of work around our other subjects. Now you can see that when I applied this, it was very transparent, very see-through, and that's because this paint doesn't have much Mars black or titanium white in it, both of which are very thick acrylic paints, and they make things much more opaque. I'm going to go back to my palette, grab a little bit of a Mars black, mix that in with the color we were using before, and when I'm farther away from the light, I'm going to use a little bit more of this. You see the colors reflecting are much darker, and so we need to be wary of that. Coming up to the edges, I can rework the edges of this in a little bit. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just trying to create really nice color and effect down here in the water. I'm going to switch over to a smaller square headed brush. I'm going to dip this in our water, make sure that it's nice and damp, and I'm going to go over to my palette, grab some Mars Black, a good amount of primary yellow, because the Mars Black can easily overtake it and just make it incredibly dark. So I'm going to create a dark base layer for some lily pads here. They're going to be a little bit more of a yellow heavy, just because I want to make sure that it stands out from the more neutral water. And I'm going to start drawing in all of those little lily pads that I have. Now that that's dried, I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush, grab a little bit of our primary yellow, a little bit of our primary blue, mix those together, grab some titanium white, mix up a nice thick bright green. This is essentially going to be our mid-tone. And I'm going to start by applying this in the background with little tapping motions. The smaller square-headed brush here, the head of it, actually creates a lot of nice little oval shapes. So by just kind of tapping it and maybe doing a little bit of a drag, I get to create all of these really nice looking lily pads. And I'm doing this on top of our darker layer. We're now applying our mid-tone and building depth on all of these previously created applications. Now we need to work on our trees in the background, and I'm going to start here with our darker base layer. I'm going to draw this in. When you're creating very fine small strokes, use less pressure with your brush so the bristles won't expand and you can get a much more detailed fine application like what I'm trying to do right here. There we go. Nice and subtle in the background. Adding a couple back here now with very watered down thin pigment. I want it to almost blend into the rest of that gold color there. Now that I have my darker tones in there, I'm going to start creating some mid-tones. And I'm going to do that with that same smaller square headed brush, some burnt umber. I'm going to apply this right under our dark tone so we can compare and contrast them. Grab a little bit of Mars Black, significantly less than we did last time, a bit more titanium white, and some of our primary yellow because that gold is going to reflect from the sky onto our trees. And now I'm going to tap this onto the edges of my trees that are facing the light because the light's going to come this way, it's going to touch, kiss the edges of these, illuminate them, and show their texture through. What are your thoughts on highlights versus midtones, Howie? I like them! Well said. Right now I'm making the base layer for the little boardwalk that we're going to be incorporating. Much like the trees on the ground, we're going to start with the darkest pigment and then we'll build on top of that. Now I can still see the drawing of my boardwalk through my paint. Again, that's because it was done with a fine tip Sharpie. But if you've lost it under the water and pond area here, 
Don't worry about it. You can always rewind the video to the start, redraw it, or use that digital sketch on Patreon. So now we have our nice little stabilizers for our hand railing. We're going to begin working on the boards here. Now I have all of the boards drawn in, but while it's done in Sharpie, this is a very thick, dark pigment. And if I were to paint it over all of it, I would probably lose those boards and that perspective and that drawing. So instead of painting all of it with that dark color, I'm going to paint every other board. And I'm going to do this because it'll allow me to paint these boards in, work on the mid-tone, work on the highlight, have a finished board, and then paint in the board right beside it and not worry about them blending together or me losing the line because one will be fully done with mid-tones and details. I'm going to grab some burnt umber, move that down below my darker tone for figuring out how bright this needs to be, grab some primary yellow, some titanium white, hint of Mars black as we've been doing throughout the whole process just to make sure that nothing's hyper saturated. And there now I have a, a nice contrast. I'm going to throw this at the front of the board as that's where the most light's going to be hitting it. And then I'm going to work it and the grain down in the direction of the board. I'm going to allow it to dissipate as we get farther and farther away from that light source. I'm also trying to leave a little bit of a line in between each board. That way it looks like there's a little bit of a dip and you can see this three-dimensional quality in the board. We don't want too much of it, but a little bit here and there on each side can really achieve a good look. There we go. Amazing how quickly that comes together, isn't it? We are now back and we're going to begin working on these two bushes. I'm going to take my older square headed brush, grab some of our primary yellow, move it to a new spot on our palette, grab a bit of primary blue, not too much. Again, remember it's a much stronger pigment than the yellow and it can quickly overtake it. So be fairly mindful with your amount. And I'm going to grab a good amount of titanium white Mix that in, and some more yellow, just because I want it to have a lot of light shining on it. I'm going to use this for the initial application of our highlights, which I'm going to apply to the edges of our bushes, which I feel are going to be closest to the light. And from there, we can go over to the mid-tone. So for the mid-tone, I'm going to grab a little bit more blue, hint of Mars Black, mix those two up. I'm going to grab some titanium white, and I'm mixing this again beside our initial splotch of paint. That way I can compare them. I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white. And I'll grab a little bit more Mars black and blue. It's a little bit too bright right now. There we go. Now I'm going to apply this right behind our first application and try to blend them together through a series of tapping motions like this. We want the mid-tone green here, and then we want it to slowly dissipate and turn into that highlighted pigment. So as I get closer to the edge, I'm applying less and less pressure with my brush, and we're creating some nice depth in our painting. Now we're going to mix this color, so I'm starting with my primary yellow, grabbing a bit of primary blue, some Mars black, grabbed a lot of Mars black there, and just a hint of titanium white. Now this is too dark, so I'm going to brighten it up with some primary yellow, some primary blue to give it that nice green again, a little bit more blue. And there we go, something very close. I'm going to start at the back. Apply a good amount from my brush, and now start blending into the rest of the tree. So I'm just going back, I'm mixing a little bit more of that yellow, and that really bright color, there we go, that's beautiful. 
and I'm just going to tap this along the edges and occasionally inside a little bit. I'm going to try to create little clusters in certain areas and then move it back farther in others as well. I'm trying to keep all of these applications nice and sharp. Now I'm going to switch over to a smaller round headed brush. This is nice for some detail work and it can also get a bit of a feathered edge which is great for things like clouds or mist, but here we're actually going to use it for some flowers. And I'm going to start with some nice little white flowers. I'm going to use a pure white, and then I'm going to take just a hint of a blue and work that in there. That way it has a little bit of a cool tone and it isn't flat at all. So once I have that, I'm going to find a nice little area on here and work that in. They'll stand out much more against the darker areas that are a little bit farther back, but they're also going to be semi-transparent and a little bit darker and kind of blend in naturally in those areas as well. Again, with the same brush, I'm going to dip the tip of it in some water, make sure that it's nice and moist, grab some of this primary red, grab a little bit of primary blue. Primary blue is a bit of a stronger color, so when you want a purple, you need to use a bit more red, and I do want a nice little purple here. Going to grab a little bit of Mars Black, darken it, thicken it. And I'm going to put in a couple little flowers in the water here. Give the painting yet again another nice little color. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut up version of one of the many hour long lessons which we offer over on patreon.com. Over there you'll also find digital sketches of the 10 minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support the channel, go over there and check it out. It is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all, as always, stay creative.